I'm afraid the news is very bad from Brussels. Hooliganism has struck again and I'm afraid the scenes are as bad as anything we've seen for a long, long time. As the kickoff for the 1985 European Cup final between Juventus and Liverpool approached, the fans and the players alike made their way to the Hazel Stadium on the outskirts of Brussels in Belgium. But as the venue for the biggest game of the season, it was not what they actually expected. May 29, 1985 is remembered as one of the darkest days of modern football as that is the date that the Hazel Stadium disaster occurred. There were 39 deaths and while some more than 600 people got injured. What actually happened there? We will start from the very beginning. At that time in May 1985, Liverpool were the defending champions of this competition and they were facing an Italian opposition, the Juventus team. And the Juventus team had many members from the Italy's 1982 World Cup winning team and they had a player like Michel Platini who was considered as the best player at that time. So it was a match between two strong teams in the continent at that time. Nous, dans le Et on pas y avait eu, euh, the match was going to be held at the Hazel Stadium, that's the Belgium national team's stadium. But despite its status as Belgium's national stadium, Hazel was in a poor state of repair by the time of 1985 European final. The 55-year-old stadium had not been sufficiently maintained for several years and large parts of the stadium were literally crumbling. Juventus president at that time, Giampiero Boniperti and Liverpool CEO Peter Robinson, both of them had asked UEFA to change the venue and choose some other venue. claiming that the hazel was not in any condition to host a european final especially a european final involving two of the largest and most powerful clubs in europe at that time however uefa refused to consider a move and it was later found out that uefa had an inspection of the stadium that lasted just 30 minutes there were around 60000 supporters in the stadium on that match day with more than 25000 for each team Now you can see the diagram of the Hazel Stadium in front of you. The two ends behind the goals comprised of all standing terraces. Each end split into three zones. The Juventus end was O, N and M and the Liverpool end was X, Y and Z. However, the tickets for the Z section were reserved for neutral Belgium fans in addition to the rest of the stadium. This meant the Juventus fans had more sections than the Liverpool fans with the Z section. normally reserved for neutrals the idea of the large neutral area was opposed by both liverpool and juventus as it would provide an opportunity for fans of both clubs to obtain tickets from agencies and while from any other means to get on the ground and create a dangerous mix of fans at the time belgium had a large italian community and many of the juventus fans bought the tickets of the z section that's where the problem all started At approximately 7 p.m. in the local time, the Liverpool and the Juventus supporters in the section X and Z stood merely a yard apart. The boundary between the two was marked by a temporary chain-link fencing. You can see a mesh fencing and a central area which was a no man's land occupied by few police people. Hooligans began to throw flares, bottles and stones across the divide and they were able to pick up stones from the crumbling terraces beneath them due to the poor condition of that stadium. As kickoff approached, the throwing became more intense. Several groups of Liverpool hooligans broke through the boundary between the section X and Z, overpowered the police and charged at the Juventus fans. The fans began to flee towards the perimeter of the section Z. They had little option but to turn and run faster. But as the fans got on the top of the stadium, they realized that they could not jump from there. There were no stairs or any fire exit. So basically all of them piled down and there was simply no escape as the fans from the Liverpool side got more aggressive the Juventus fans were pressed against the walls of the terrace and the moment of impact the actual impact was when the wall went off the wall could not withstand the force of the fleeing Juventus supporters and a lower portion collapsed killing 39 people and more than 600 people got injured the uefa the organizer of the event was firm on its 
observation that the blame for the incident was on the shoulders of the Liverpool fans. But however, the UEFA, the owners of the Hazel Stadium and the Belgian police were also investigated in an investigation that ran for around 18 months. But after that, the conclusion was that the blame was totally on the shoulders of the Liverpool fans. On June 2, 1985, just a matter of days after the event, UEFA banned English clubs from European competition for an indefinite period. That was actually a ban for 5 years and a ban for 6 years for the Liverpool team. It would be in April 1990 that English teams found themselves back in the European competition, though Liverpool found themselves suspended for an additional one year. The Liverpool squad arrived home after the most disastrous European tie in history to more media attention than had they won the cup for keeps in front of peaceful crowds. Flags were flying at half-mast out of respect for the dead and it seemed in shame as well. This had a huge impact on the financial side of English Football Federation as they were a leading member at that time of UEFA but it would be 2008 before they would again top that particular standing. Despite the scale of the disaster, the UEFA officials and all the concerned people went ahead with the game as they felt that abandoning the game would risk for further violence out there. Juventus won the match 1-0 thanks to a penalty by Michel Platini. For Liverpool and English football, it was the end of an era. It was a moment in football so odd that the straightforward act of honouring the dead seemed somehow banal and insufficient. More than 30 years on, the hurt of Hazel is impossible to erase.